uh, have a few presentations from some of our students uh, from the Intro to Rails course that QC Merge put on. And then Doug Alcorn is going to give a preview of his Burlington Ruby talk. So there's a couple of seats left. Those of you standing up probably want to grab a seat if there's not a chair. Yeah. So. On the comfy couch, there's a couch up here. There, there's a couch and a comfy seat. Just a seat seat if you don't want to share. And a regular seat. Yeah. Right. And you don't want to sit on the love seat for me. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Jim Anders, if he's still here. No, oh, Jim just, yeah, I, I guess I'll do it, because, uh, sorry. I just, I was, uh, like, TAing more or less for a couple of the classes, but, so we've got, who do we have? we got Chip, Josh, and, um, Zach, Zach sorry. Any other, cl uh, your classmates here tonight? I don't see any. All right. So three of the Intro to Rails students. So what we did, we just had a 12-week course, Introduction to Ruby on Rails Development. Met every Saturday for eight hours. Um, Jim Anders, uh, who was standing in the back there, was one of the instructors with uh, Ben Stafford. Ben is not here either tonight. But uh, um, uh, just taught him Ruby on Rails. to so Most of the guys, how much experience did you have before you, you came, just kind of each of you? I'd used Rails for different projects, okay. stuff with PQT, Ruby, and whatnot, uh, but didn't touch uh, web, web stuff with it okay. until the class. Right. And Chip? I had probably about five months before the class. Nine years of .NET. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to deal with that, right? <laughs> but actually, no. Um, so in some extremely novice developers, right, that were in the class who and uh, you know sadly they're not here tonight but they did great work they're probably a little timid about the work they did but um, i was extremely impressed with having zero ruby experience to um uh, working on you know their their project apps which were it was just amazing to see how far they came so um without further ado would should i just pick one of you zach do you think you can get it up here uh, give me just a minute here. okay uh, chip you ready Go for it. This is an old machine I can't airplay, so oh, I, can't airplay. I need to plug in. Great. So I like I like um, tech news, and I use different sources to kind of get my news on a daily basis. I follow different. Um, Can you big in that? Do I? Can you big in that for us old guys? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> command, command plus. Is that good? More? Okay, so what I what I wanted to do is kind of build like a, a search thing that searches um, Twitter, searches Reddit, um, Hacker News, which is a feature that I'm working on now. I'm trying to get down the filtering, um, just so I could just you know type a topic like Ruby or you know Angular or or something and just get the most relevant results from all sources. So. Um, what I've built so far is, that was pivotal, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I built a pivotal clone? No. Um, this is what I've built so far. So it's just a basic search engine. So whenever you load it up, um, I have it just pulling up a default query right now, Rails, whenever it first loads. So you can type in a search like Angular. And it'll search. Why isn't Reddit pulling Angular? It was. This is obviously a work in progress under a lot of construction modifications. So I'm still trying to finalize the design. Um, but the main thing was just get the different things working. So as you see, I can just go ahead and um, 
click one of these it opens the link up in a new tab takes me right to the actual post so same thing works for Twitter and Hacker News so Twitter is a little bit different because you have the text of the tweet but you also have the URL so I'm still trying to refine the URL filtering because if you notice yeah, some of them it's not pulling in the whole URL, and I need to re refactor that to make it work. But you know, it is pulling in the whole URL, but that's what Twitter shortens it to. <laughs> I guess that dog's name is Ruby. <laughs> but a couple, a few elements that I've brought in here. Um, I use Bootstrap for the actual header, and I use a little bit of CoffeeScript for the uh, um, for the transition up there where it turns gray. I also um, added users, so using a gem called device. Hopefully, I got my password right. Okay. So that's all I have at this point, but where I'm trying to take this is um, not only to refine the design, but to bring in some other sources, um, have some more customization, and um, having you allowing users to be able to like bookmark their links so they can they can save them, and they can also share them with each other if they want to. So I have a lot of different ideas bouncing around inside. So if anybody. Wants, do you have any questions? Or? Have you thought about doing something client side with it? With, uh, with uh, just serialize everything and make an API? Or? Not yet. Not yet. Um, but that is that is an option. How big is it? Like lines of code, that kind of thing? Like models, number of models? Right now I have, um, I have two models uh, for, wait a second. Yeah, I think. I think the, hold on, let me look back, because I know I had to go back and forth with the Twitter API. The Twitter is just using the API to pull everything in, and then I'm filtering um, in the actual controller. I could probably move that to a model, but for Reddit, most of the business takes place in the model for that. And the Hacker News. Are you using the unofficial Hacker News API or scraping it? I'm scraping it right now. I'm trying to get the API to work so I can better implement the search functionality. What tools are, uh, are you using to scrape? I'm using Mechanized Nokogiri. Yeah. I was looking at Feed Feed Jiri or Feed Jira, um, but I don't know. Um, this is pulling from the different sources. So it's pulling from Reddit. It's pulling from, um, well, the, what you see, the Hacker News um, piece of it is just a live feed from what's on the front page of Hacker News because I haven't yet implemented the filtering. But the Twitter is pulling directly from the Twitter through the Twitter API. How many total lines of code? Break stats. While that's running, I think he was asking um, whether you're doing this, the searching and filtering yourself, or are you querying an API to do the search? Uh, for Twitter, I'm querying the API. For Reddit, I'm actually doing the filtering myself. Have you considered saving all of the text you get from what you're scraping and throwing in the DB and then being able to maybe modify it and display it in a nice way client side? I'm thinking about that, yeah. You should use Elasticsearch for that because it'd be awesome. Elasticsearch. <laughs> cool. You should use Solar for that because it would be Elasticsearch. <laughs> cool. You should not listen to anybody. Anyone else? <laughs> Don't listen to that guy. You're being trolled. So 196 total lines of code. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, why? Why did they tell us about this? This feature right here. Like fake stats? Fake stats. Been around for nine years. I don't want to think of it. It's built in. Rake Rake dash capital T. Cool. Yeah, Rake dash T. Yeah. Read it. So. Awesome. All right. All right. You're in a room full of Rubius. You will get up here, plug your laptop into that display. Someone in this room will fix it. I think I can do airplay here. Um, it's called Comfy Couch. Is the thing? Are you on our network? Should be. No, yeah. Comfy Couch should be on okay. actually. Cool. Yay. So um, I'm Josh Rose, and uh, Recovering.net developer. I really got involved with the class because uh, I came to Rails Day here at Gaslight uh, in the fall and met some people that were just incredibly kind and open and sharing. And there just isn't anything like that in the .NET community as far as I'm concerned. So that really drew me to the community. And during that process, I fell in love with Ruby as as a language. So. Said that so genuinely, <laughs> I legitimately believe like you are you're in on Ruby. Yeah, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm sold. Like you're about your wife. <laughs> I have two loves in this world: my wife and Ruby. <laughs> so, so um, I was a terrible uh, student, and I hadn't even started my project. You lost your. Oh, sorry. Thank you. All right, how do I? Maybe I should. Sorry, guys. I'm running Yosemite, so that might have something to do with it. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <sighs> Stupid. <laughs> oh, good call. Yeah. That might be a little more reliable. So I'm sorry, Kevin, to keep you uh, running up here. That's right. You are not the first presenter to have Cool. All right, cool. So on Saturday, the last class, uh, Bill and Doug were in, and I hadn't really even started on my uh, project. So there was a question that was in the room on uh, our last cl class, which was, how much pizza do we order? Do we order uh, five pizzas, six pizzas? Yeah, I don't know. And I think it was Doug mentioned that, oh, there's a formula, 2.5 slices per person. So before I got started on my passion project, because my passion project is near and dear to my heart and I didn't want to cut my teeth on it, I decided to build a stupid app that um, is at least useful. So all this does is it takes in the number of hungry people and it tells you how much pizza you need. Magicpizzamath.com. <laughs> 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 No, that's right. That's right. So, so um, I uh, test drove this because you have to get the formula just right. There's some complicated math in there. So, <laughs> yeah, did, did you use lambda calculus to implement? Your Absolutely. By I had to pla pass a block around and everything. It was really complicated. So, um, that's right. So. Uh, I guess I should run rake stats here and find out how complicated is magic pizza math. It's 47 lines of code, and it is uh, test driven. Only 100 more lines of code, and you could search the entire internet. Nice. <laughs> That's right. So the the cool thing uh, that I really found with Ruby, at least, and another thing that really made me fall in love with it was the fact that. Um, being in the .NET world, I had spent so much time talking about, do we use the decorator pattern or the builder pattern or the factory pattern? Do we, you know, I'm sure you guys have been involved in meetings, if you were in Java or .NET, where you're talking about the architecture and trying to figure out how to structure your app. And the amazing thing that happened, and this is really what got me into Ruby, is the am amount of work it takes to actually write your first test. I mean, that is, for me, the number one thing that drew me to Ruby over .NET is that I didn't have to code to interfaces. I didn't have to do all this extra work just to get to the point where I can write my first test. So 
here's my complicated tests and various conditions to see if my magic pizza math is calculating the, the, right, the right thing. So anyway, magic pizza math was not my passion project. Uh, my passion project is um, basically, it's called transporter station. And uh, my wife and I, you know, sometimes careers aren't fulfilling necessarily. So in life, I think it's important to, to find other things in life that you can pull enjoyment out of. So my wife and I are passionate about dogs. We uh, like to get involved with the, the various organizations. So a common thing that we do is we do transports where we drive down to Lexington, we pick up dogs, we throw them into the trailer. Uh, we take six dogs back to Cincinnati, then we hand them off to somebody else who takes them to Columbus. So, but the way that's organized now is like this. As you can see, I've got a, I've got, <laughs> yeah. So, inhumane. It, it is inhumane. <laughs> it is inhumane. So, and you can see in my dog rescue folder, I've got 553 unread messages because every time they run a transport, somebody sends out an email and they start annotating this and they forward it. And before you know, it's just this massive block of cute fonts and colors. So hard to read, hard to organize. And there's been a lot of cases where um, the information hasn't been right. Somebody's canceled. Somebody didn't update the, the sheets, which is what they call us. And as a result, um, someone didn't show up and somebody had to drive an extra hour and a half or so. So, um, so a solution to that, you know, as a programmer, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, shoot, this is just form data. This is prime for automation. So transporterstation.org is my passion project. And I'm terrible at styling, so forgive me. This is the best I could do. It's not common sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It is bootstrap, though. So the idea of the process is uh, rescues log in, they create a transport, and then rescues add dogs to that transport, and then rescues add stops along the way, and volunteers sign up. And then my wife made me add this last happy photo of dogs find happy homes, so, which I think was, that's why she's uh, the breadwinner. <laughs> All right, so, um, I've got organization registration. I use devise here. Uh, organization and volunteers are essentially two different devise models. And organizations can sign up. I think my uh, Heroku Dino is spinning up here again, so I apologize for the delay here. Did you guys, uh, it seems like both of you used device. Did you choose that because it was just there and easy, or was there a reason you did it over Sorcery or another library, or what was the logic? It's a good question. It seemed to be, you know, um, and... Um, during our class, we, uh, we actually implemented uh, authentication from scratch. Uh, and, you know, that seems to be a, a good thing to do. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, we, uh, we got into uh, device just because it does a lot for you, like registration emails and forgot password and those kinds of things. Amazing thing out of the box, which honestly, I kind of wish there was a .NET device, you know, because I remember how hard it was. And you know how hard it is in .NET because Microsoft is constantly changing their mind about how to log in and register and all those kinds of things. Just use AD. Yes, yeah, just use AD. Just set up an AD server. So, so we can register organizations, and once an organization registers, what was that thing that you just? <laughs> oh, sorry. That might be the most interesting thing of the whole presentation. Oh, sorry. So um, this is iMacro. It's a plugin for Chrome, and basically uh, during the process because I was kind of trying to prepare for this so that I didn't make myself look stupider than I normally make myself look. I, uh, I wanted to kind of script some of the, the form fill-ins so that people didn't have to wait mm -hmm. as I typed and mistyped and fumbled around. So iMacro is free for Chrome. It's kind of handy. It's, it's like Capybara in a way, but... Like Selenium? Selenium, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. same kind of idea. Cool. So I just registered Sorry, a... Oh, no, absolutely, yeah. So um, I'm going to create a new tra transport, and this is just jQuery because I was lazy. So create a new transport, and then I can add dogs to my transport. And here we go, magic again with iMacro, but it doesn't upload files, so I'm going to choose a random placeholder here. So now I've created a dog that... Um, 
and I try to include relevant information. At some point, I'm going to have to start getting rescues involved and find out, you know, is this, is my vision of what you need the same? Yes. Because I'm probably wrong on a lot of points. So, but you know, there's relevant information, like do we need to isolate the dog? How big is the dog? Because if I've got a, a little Ford Focus and I need to carry six Labradors, then I probably need to rethink my situation. <laughs> so... Cubes, Indeed. <laughs> yeah. I use magic pizza math daily, and I suggest you do the same. That's right. That's right. All you need is the internal capacity of every car on the planet. Right. Cool. So um, I added the dog to the transport, and now I'm going to add some legs to the transport. Now, um, I've built some. I built some Angular stuff in the past, so I kind of knew the API way of doing things, you know, where you create a RESTful endpoint and then you write your Java scripts, as Jim calls it, to consume your endpoint. But I kind of wanted to see how to do it the in a, just Rails. I tried to keep this app as much just Rails as possible so that I could really kind of learn the Rails way of doing things. So I actually found a Rails cast about a gem called Gone. I don't even know if that's active anymore. I guess you guys probably would know better than I. But Gone allowed you to essentially, um, sh I think what it does behind the scenes is that it shoves arrays into data attributes on HTML elements. But it allows you in a really easy way, it's probably best to show it off here, to so Gone essentially uh, when you pull the gem in, creates this um, global variable, or it's it's not global; it's local to whatever controller you're in. But you can essentially define a collection on Gone, and then it becomes available in your JavaScript. So here's the the coffee script to essentially uh, using underscore, because that's kind of how I knew to each over the uh, legs and gone and then add Google Maps markers. So again the magic. And the other thing that I just found amazing because I worked on a project in Brazil that um, where we had to geocode and to geocode in .NET we wrote a background service and we just had it go to the database and every night it basically would update the latitude and longitude and that wasn't a very efficient way to do it. But in Ru Ruby, I found this amazing gem called Geocoder. And every time I save a leg, geez, if I can find my model, sorry guys. Leg.rb. Leg.rb. Yes, thank you. Singular. That's right. <laughs> nice. So um, all I had to do was add this geocoded by full address and then create a uh, full address method that essentially got all the information from the various properties. And now every time I save a, um, a leg, it automatically looks for the latitude and longitude for that. So I create a leg here. Now I've got a point. Create another leg to the journey. Create another point. And it just starts mapping. So that, that's, I mean, to me, the, the geocoder gem was just an amazing find. And the power in that. The, and the other things they can do, like by IP address and whatnot. So essentially, I've created a, a transport. So I've added dogs. I've added legs. So now I'm going to log in as a volunteer. And... As a volunteer now, I can't, I can't do things like create legs and create dogs, but I can sign up for those legs. And when you sign up, I say you're good people, just because you know it's, it's true. And then from there, instead of having these run sheets that people manually create, I've started. Uh, and currently, I've got it so that only organizations can can see the run sheet because it has things like phone numbers and emails and other data that one might consider sensitive that one shouldn't be emailing around, <laughs> for instance. But um, so here's kind of that information, just a breakdown of the run sheet, the stops, the uh, 
person who, the organization and the uh, person in charge of the, uh, the transport, the dogs that are associated with that, and the, st the stops here at the bottom, and volunteers if they have signed up. So I think I'm at the point where I've actually, I haven't reached out to my transport people yet, but I think I'm going to reach out to them and have them start essentially beta testing to see if it fits their needs. Do you have this on a public repo? It is, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, thanks, one of the things that I learned in the class uh, more than anything else was the cool tools that people use that I had no idea existed. Like Jim, and Jim is amazing at sharing just cool stuff that he's using. Um, and uh, I learned about code ship, so I've got CI integrated on my repo. I've got code climate, which I had no idea something like this existed. It is phenomenal um, that I can find my test coverage. I can see the. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just an amazing metric stuff that you know, in the .NET world, there's there are no tools like this. They they just don't exist. Code reviews are all manual, and you know your senior architect or whatever title is current. You know they go around and they they analyze and they have a lot of opinions. This is very just very cool. So it is on a public repo. Um, my GitHub is. Uh, just GitHub. My username is just Joshua Rose. And this repo is uh, Transporter Station. So feel free to send me a pull request and tell me all the things I've screwed up. But yeah, that's that's my project. All right, Zach, wherever you are, plug in. Uh, somebody's going to have to get my Postgres server on my phone. Oh, we can do that, too. <laughs> it just, it just a crap on me. All right, what you're about to experience is called uh, fishbowl programming. <laughs> if you haven't seen this before, you're in front of you. If you see something wrong, just shout it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how this works. <laughs> Cross my fingers here. Hey. Oh wow, that's surprising. Uh, and uh, unsurprisingly, several people who were there at the very first meeting never came. They never came back. <laughs> <laughs> and fact, Rob, you were there. Past the key. I was there. James was there for the very first Cincy RVs. Where everybody has to stand up and walk in front. And type. Yeah. We just passed the well, keyboard no, around. Pass the key or actually, the <laughs> little plug-in. Yeah, it was uh, a small room at the recruit military, and the uh, the projector the could uh, cable could reach every laptop in the room. <laughs> so we just passed it around. So uh, complaining about my uh, PG connection there. Uh, so if somebody knows uh, uh slash etc slash initd. You're on Linux, right? Yeah. Slash, or probably sudo. Yeah. Sudo. And give us a font bump if you can. I'm not sure how the hell you do that. Let me, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, uh. Ubuntu world or whatever you're. Uh, just don't even bother. Just to, everybody move to the front of the right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just lost where I was here. Suda, et cetera. Uh, init, I-N-I-T dot D slash post Chris. P-O-S tab. P-O-S tab. <coughs> oh, it's not tab. See, no. Is it no. PG? It's, PG, it might be PG. That's, that's PG the thing I was looking tab. for. Yeah, do PG tab. Nope, I'm out of ideas. Uh, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> yeah. Do a backspace and do which PG? Space start. PG space. G and then space start. It either works or doesn't. No, no, the, you need to just sudo pg oh. space start. It's cool, man. Just relax. Yeah. All right, do which space psql. It's not installed. Um, the client, at least, is not installed. If you say psql, what does it say? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, it's, uh, just do PG tab. Uh, wow. Yeah, there's PG Ooh, there's PG tab. Okay. Yeah. 
case. Wait, what did Sidney So do do the uh, Postgres client install? Do uh, um, you don't need the client though. No, just just say. Can you say service PG start? See what's in. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Service space PG space start. Yeah. I don't like that. No. Two hours ago, it was fine. <laughs> Well, some the older parts are. Uh, service. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just you do do, which go PG? to your. Yeah. yeah. What did which PG say? Oh, which PG? Yeah. Which yeah. space PG? Do uh, just PG on its own. Done. Keep that window open. Keep that window open. Right, okay, so. Same thing. I mean, Rails itself starts. Just take, yeah. Okay. But, uh. Um, hit about so, yeah, voucher. Yeah. Hmm. That's not good. It doesn't have any trouble at all. So, how much data did you have in that? Uh, it's, not a, it's not a lot of so data. When, I mean, could I, you switch to uh, SQLite in your database config just to get the app runner? Uh. I see yeah. Yeah. That, that could be like um, I was using Vagrant, Vagrant, and then uh, I was trying out Ruby Mine, and Ruby Mine was doing its own thing with Vagrants, and something uh, ruined something there. I, I can I can just yeah. There's not a whole lot to it, so. So maybe just go to your database config under oh, config yeah, database yeah. yeah. Forward. Though somebody in the room probably remembers the connection. Is it just um, SQLite? So, uh, okay, who remembers uh, SQLite database config settings? SQLite. Is it like the default three or no? Uh, one L. One L, yeah. Is it two or three? Three. 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 And then you don't want a username and password. You want like a DB or something like that? Is that right? There is no username. No. There is no DB. username. You want to just file? file. You need to represent the file name. Okay. Uh, Take a. Uh, remove line 20 and 21. Oh, just database. Yeah. I think it's just a yeah. database. And then database is just the file name, which is. Yeah, do like. Make something up. That's good enough. Slash. No, line 18. Oh, right there. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be close enough. Yeah. That might. And then the other thing is in your gem file. You want to oh, go ahead and take any name for the database. And then in your gem file, change the database adapter. You probably got PG in there. Right and up. change that to SQLite 3, I think. Yeah. Or SQLite. So in. Uh, so right underneath. Right there on line 8. You don't eight. even need to remove PG, just leave it. Yes. Right, and then uh, bundle it.
So run my grade. You have to run my grade. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So BX, Rails, make, DB create. Do you need to do DB create? Uh, no. Okay. I don't believe so. And then start your app. Oh yeah. Oh there it is. Uh, I haven't seen anything here. Let's do new. No, okay, so. So wait a minute. You did rewrite Pivotal Tracker here. Pivotal? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely some tracking going on. When not. Uh, I work uh, in a manufacturing environment, and uh, they're still using pen, pen and pencil to do all this stuff. Or whatever. One guy's got a computer somewhere in the building, and. Uh, does some stuff in Excel, um, so I'd like to get them uh, away from that. Uh, that exact problem is what I'm working on right now. Right? <laughs> Seriously. That's what I'm not working on. Okay, so I can give it a job number. Um, we uh, got lots of different projects, lots of different clients. Oh no! Don't cross your fingers for this. I can't get to the screen. I'm going to have to. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so I've got a job number there. Um, I can give it a client. It could be Walmart. Billy Bob can be a manager. The project name could be, say, Spring Refresh. Okay. Now, um, so there's my project. I could, uh, oh. Up, you got a typo. Typo in your controller. In the controller. So go to your <laughs> tasks controller. Well, that's gonna. In your editor. Right, that's gonna be hard to get to from here now. I can't. Uh... Well, you can totally do. Really? Oh wait, there we go. Go to. Um... What was that? Uh, tasks. Do you not have a tasks controller? What is this? Oh wait. No, no, no that's, that's not what's the wrong. Name. There we go. There we go. Okay. And just scroll up to the top, up a little bit, and you'll see controllers, task controller. There you go. Yeah. And then, uh, where is it? Line 27. Take those two. There you go. Save it. All right. And just refresh the page. Oh. There we go. No. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I can give it, um, every project's made up of tasks, and I can assign, uh, an assign task, give dates, um, go ahead and create that task. Uh, I didn't do much as far as the uh, views go, so it's not a whole lot to those. And then um, every task has an action, so it can go to a couple different machines and whatnot. Um, I give it an action type, and right now I'm just uh, putting that in manually. Amount I could say, you gotta cut 500 of them, and right now there's uh, zero completed. Okay, so come back here to. Projects and there it is. Okay, so I can just go one. I mean, I can I can add more. I can uh, come down here. I can see my tasks are uh, assigned to it. 
And if I come uh, to my tasks, I have my, uh, what I call uh, action tasks, um, or task actions. I could view that and I could uh, edit it if I wanted to. So not a whole lot to it just yet. It's um, a great start. It's, uh, we were doing Rails 4 in the class and uh, somehow or another I ended up on Rails uh, 3.2. So it's, uh, it's been interesting. Figure, you know, no, trying to do Rails 3.2 stuff. Uh, Did you have uh, existing, um, were you playing with Rails prior to the class when you... No, I mean, it was so. it was a vagrant box or whatever. I, uh, okay. I went out and got and mm. I know I had Rails 4 on there, and then somehow it ended up on Rails uh, Rails 3 there. I don't know how, but... Uh, Maybe I, the, the, the box you... Yeah. Or, so let's yeah. upgrade that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. Nah. I'll have to wait on that one. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, some some of the things were uh, before filter in Rails three two uh, that that stumped me for for a while trying to figure out why it wasn't that um, and uh, updating stuff. I have to do uh, update attributes in three two versus just updating Rails four. A couple of, a couple of things like that uh, were stumbling, but uh, didn't have much tests. You know, I don't I don't have a lot. I work twelve hours a day, like sure. six seven days a week. Yeah. So I wasn't worried about tests. I was worried about just kind of getting something done. Yeah. And uh, that's what I got so far. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Well, thank you all, Zach. Especially, I know that's hard um, when you're, you know, uh, trying to get your app running. A lot of people yelling at you and stuff, but that's that's just part of it. Um, it's a great community, as you saw. Uh, you know, everybody just likes to chip in and help. So. Um, if you want to continue on with the app, room full of update folks around you that, you know, help you. What's that? Update next month. There you go. Yeah, let's see <laughs> yeah. updates. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so there you get an idea. That's just three of the 12 students we had at the class. Tom was a TA also who showed up every single day. I was only there about a third of the time, so thank you, Tom. Um, but the words that they had to say about Jim Anders uh, uh, and his passion for teaching Rails development. It was amazing just watching him uh, teach the class. He's a very knowledgeable Rubius and uh, um, with a passion for sharing his knowledge. So um, thank you, gentlemen, for coming and presenting. Uh, I think that's kind of very indicative of uh, the level of participation we had from the students. Uh, and I'm excited. Hopefully, we'll get to do another one real soon. We wanted to do another one this quarter. That's not going to happen. but. Uh, We'd like to do the intro to Rails course again and then also offer a an advanced Rails course, which will pick up where this led off and uh, do some a uh, little bit of deep diving into the Rails stack and uh, do some JavaScript, some client-side stuff. Um, Amber, Angular, who knows? Ember, Angular. Yeah, like Bell, if, if someone were interested in doing a uh, introduction to Rails course, do you choose to repeat this? How would they let you? How would you let us know? Oh man, that's a great question, Doug. That's too great a question. Hello at Team um, Yeah, uh, hello at teamgaslight.com or hello at gas hello at teamgaslightsoftwarellc.co. <laughs> we also have that domain. So, uh, if that's easier to remember. I guess. I guess what I would say is I, most of the people in this room. That course now. Sure. But if you know people who are interested, let them know. Right. And Once uh, we know more about demand, we can take action. Certainly, uh, unrepentant.netters and PHPers or whatever, um, Javaists, Pythonistas, they're doing pretty good on their own. They <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so. You know, there's plenty of work. Uh, we're constantly seeking out talented developers, and there are others, Ben, and uh, others uh, who are seeking to hire Rubius. So, um, if you have friends who have shown an interest, by all means, Bill at Gaslight.co or at TeamGaslight.com is the new is this year's domain. <laughs> so, um, we'll change. There'll be an announcement within the next few months of what our domain will be next year. So, look for that. All right, Doug. All right. Ready to have at it?